Hey everyone, Kathy Zilski here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel today. If you are visiting me for the first time, I just want to say, hey, this is me. This is Kathy. I am in my craft slash dining room and uh, it's an exciting place to be. There will be no cooking tutorials today, only design chat. So welcome. I'm really happy to have you here and I'm excited about today's topic, which is white space. Ah, now here's the thing about these chats. I get asked a lot all the time about, Kathy, why do your pages look good? Why do your cards look good? And here's the thing, I am not craftier than you. I'm really not. In fact, I, I, would, I would venture to say that I am one of the least crafty, crafty, crafty people that I know. All I know is how design works. And what I do is I take the information and I apply it to my space, whatever that space may be. Do you know what I'm saying? And I want to start out by saying when we talk about things in design chats, right? Space doesn't matter. You can have a little tiny credit card size. You can have a 12 by 12 scrapbook page. Everything works in whatever given space you're given. So I just wanted to clarify that. And I see people popping in and I want to say hello. And here's the thing. Tell me today, where are you watching from? Where are you watching? I like to know where people are from when they're joining my lives. And also, if you're watching this on replay, tell me as well, because it's going to replay as well. And another thing I want to point out is when I am done with this live, anything that I can link below that I talked about, I will link in the, in the uh, well, show notes, I guess you call them, in the box below, you'll find more information after the video has posted. I'm kind of not sure what I'm doing until I get into it. I mean, I have things laid out for you. All right. So I will have more information on whatever I'm sharing today below. Now, today we are talking about white space. And before I click down to my table view, because I don't want to waste, when I start that timer, I want to start talking about design. And that's another thing too. I will see comments after this if I don't see them while, uh, and in fact, let me put that, there we go, sound off. Um, if I don't see your comment when you post it, that that's okay. Just stay with me. I will come back and I will look through comments after the fact. The problem is I can see them all popping up and like, it's just, it's shiny to me. I'm like, oh, there's someone from Kansas City, first time live, Vicki. I have to stay focused on the task at hand, but I want to tell you a few things about white space before we go down to the table. Here's the thing. What does white space, why, why is it white space important in design? You hear this, right? And people talk about white space and you, you hear it a lot when people talk about clean and simple design, right? People talk about clean and simple design and white space incorporates into that. But and I tell you something, it does more than just mm, leave open spaces. Here's a few things about white space. Number one, it adds a visual rest to anything you are creating. Why is visual rest important? Well, here's the deal, people. We are bombarded visually with stuff. Think about, and, and this is crazy too, think about social media and how much that has changed the way we get information. We are getting content all the time. Before social media existed and I taught a class on design, I would just talk about advertising messages, you know, and it's something like, 20,000 messages in an hour. I mean, it was just crazy. Visual rest causes us to stop, drop, and pay attention. Yeah, that's pretty good. But it really does. It gets our attention. In a world where everything is super busy and there's a lot of stuff going on, white space is an invitation to slow down. To slow it down. Just like me right now when I'm talking a little too fast and I just take a minute and slow it down. Okay? And so that's step one. Step two, it feels calm. And that's good in design. Sometimes you want to feel like, hmm, you know how you look at something sometimes and you just like take a deep breath and it just feels really good to your eyes. I'm going to guess there's some white space happening there. White space is calming. And number three, it makes whatever you are doing feel somehow more significant. Because when there's not a lot going on or when you surround the core of your design with white space, it adds to the gravitas, if you will. Oh my gosh, my stomach, my stomach is growing. All right, what are you drinking this morning or this afternoon or this evening? I mean, hey, if it were after five, I might have a glass of wine, but it's not, so I'm gonna have my coffee. Mm. 
And again, great to see all of you people joining in today. I think this is a record. Over 100 people. Love it. Thank you so much for being here. So shall we? Shall we go to the tabletop? Are we ready? Okay, I think we're ready. And here we go. Now, hopefully today I'm going to have a little better light. I'm still filming in the dining room slash craft room, but it is a cloudy day. And also, I apologize, no manicure. I've got, I've got a broken nail. And when, once that nail... You know what? It's going to be great. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see some comments and I am going to come back to them. But here's the thing. Today's project or today's video, these videos aren't about getting you to go out and shop. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, ideally, I would love for you to, you know, go buy things that I show you and create. Right now, I don't have links for any of my digital designs. And here's another thing I want to say. All of the scrapbook pages that I'm going to show you today they are physical pages. I, I don't really do much digital scrapbooking, but what I do is I print things using my computer, right? A title and a date, and then I add my physical things, okay? So we're gonna start out here. I'm gonna get one more sip of coffee. Mm. And I'm gonna start the timer because you, you know how it's gotta go, right? I'm gonna click it and we're on. So we're gonna start in the most basic scenario of white space. This layout is so old, my friends. This layout is from 2003 when I first started scrapbooking and I realized, oh my gosh, I can do whatever I want. I don't have to fill it up. I can go so simple. White space as a, as, as a definition is simply any space on a given page with nothing on it. That's it. It does not have to be white. Okay. It does not have to be white. It just has to be open. All right. Now this white space, beautiful. Two photos here. And yeah, she's 24 now. I just want to point that out. And two little embellishments back when I got to show you this a little closer. Remember that punch? Oh my goodness. I freaking love punches in the day. But here we go. What does this do? It really focuses your eyes here, obviously. That is the focal point. The white space around it allows this breath of openness and wonder. Okay, you see that. Let's move on to another one. All right, I'm bringing in this old page. Now this is one I don't even, I don't even think I've shared this anywhere maybe but this is this is super old this is back when i used to fly around the country a lot for simple scrapbooks magazine and i used to go to utah and i would go to the office and that was me in a hotel living like a big fancy professional person now something like this again white space obviously white it just allows everything to breathe. Now, this little guy, do you remember the making, uh, making memories, memory, the foam stamps? Okay. I decided to create, what is this called again? Oh, right. It's called a visual triangle. One, two, three, connecting, triangular connection, right? But the rest of the space is just white, open, airy, and breathable. All right, let's move on. Now, Excuse the slowness of this. It is super humid in my space today. I just took my pages out of the album and they're already starting to warp. I don't have my air conditioner on yet. So I'm risking warpage to teach white space. This design is based on something I actually showed in another layout in, a ch in another chat, right? And again, all we have here is a cluster of photos, journaling, right in the middle. And I realize this is on a white page, right? Super, super simple. But again, what it does is it focuses you in. It brings you in. I mean, this page could have looked good if it would have been mounted, you know, trimmed up maybe a quarter of an inch off, right? And mounted it on another piece of cardstock. You could totally do that, but I didn't. Now I'm going to show you another page. All right. Do we see the white space here? That is not a trick question. Okay, because it's not just the open space up here, but it's also pattern paper. Pattern paper can be white space. It's open. It has nothing in it. And it is focusing you in here to this photo. Here's the other thing. You can have white space in your photos. Do you see this little guy here? My daughter actually shot this. This was years ago. And holy aging. I was 44. This was a decade ago. 
Time flies, my friends, but this photo has white space. And then I've chosen to overlay a title in journaling, print that photo out. So the photo itself has the white space and everything else kind of does as well. Yeah, see what I mean? Clean and simple, right? Clean and simple does not mean boring. Now I'm gonna bring back another page here that I showed you in, an, uh, in another chat. And you're gonna see things repeat. I literally have so many layouts. I, yeah, I spend a couple hours pulling some things that I think will make a good result, but this is another point about white space. That wood grain pattern background paper, that's white space. That is white space. It does not have to be white. It doesn't have to be white and therein lies the beauty. Just open. And again, this invites you in. You look at the content, right? Look at, look at my hands. It's all gracefully connected together. That is, of course, unity, right? Remember when we talked about repetition? But white space doesn't have to be white. And pattern paper can be white space, okay? And there you go. I'm going to show you one more here. I've got this guy. Now, again, oh, the warping. The warping is making me really sad. I'm going to have to get this all back into page protectors as soon as we're done. I tell you that humidity. Again, white space in this beautiful yellow cardstock. And even white space, you know, surrounding my journaling. Do you see that space, that margin space that goes around? That's another really... Um, common way that I work white space into projects, even maybe if they are very full. So, all right, okay, volume is at max. You cannot hear me very well. It looks like my microphone is, is coming through, so I'm, I, I'm sorry, Roberta. I'm gonna have to double check that, but let me, let me address that in the future. Apologize for that. All right, if sound is good, we're good. Um, it could also be, you know, various video feeds are giving you various things. So let's move on to cards. Now I'm gonna bring a card in and we're gonna zoom and pan. We're gonna come in here. How do I get bigger? There we go. We're coming in to cards because I wanna be closer here and talk about white space and cards. Now, this is very obvious, right? You see this, you've got white all the way around and that is framing out the content in the middle that is all connected and together. Now, the thing that's kind of cool about an idea like this is that this open space on your card just makes everything breathe. It's expanding. It does not have room to mm, feel crowded, I guess. I don't know. You know, it, it's super basic, but that is white space in a nutshell. Now, I'm going to show you another card. This little guy, you take the cake. Now this is pretty obvious too, right? You've got a very colorful sentiment and you are surrounding it with white. And yes, it is white cardstock, but you also have the white framing margin. Now this is something that I do in most of my card projects, okay? And what I like to do is trim a panel that I'm working on to be smaller than the actual card base so that I get this nice framing bit of margin space surrounding the card. That is another aspect of white space. And it creates this nice little holder, if you will. It creates this nice little frame that is simple, but also brings you into the experience of whatever your sentiment is, right? All right, I'll show you another one. Now, this is an older project. I, I think I have a video for this, but I may not. But here's another example of some white space. And the cool thing about something like this is I'm taking, you know, three little colored trees and placing them down in sort of the lower half of the page. And this space up here with, this is a, I think it's a lawn fawn plate of some kind that I, I need to play with this again because it's so stinking cute. But this up here, even though it's white space, you still have a little bit of pattern in there to create some interest. Now that framing margin around the edge of the card, well, that's white space too. And again, it is creating a very calm and a very inviting space. I've had a lot of people, you know, say to me, Kathy, but I, I can't stop it simple. I, it's really hard for me to incorporate white space and have cards that are so simple. And that's okay. That is okay. We don't all have to craft alike. Does that make sense? But when you look at how you are setting up your design, you can always look at what can I do to add a little space to the card? Now, in something like this, there's a lot going on with that rainbow, right? There's a lot of color going on there. 
but I've balanced it out in the upper right by just not having anything up there at all. Super, super simple. I'm gonna show you another card project here. Okay, now even something like this where we have, you know, this little stenciled background and everything's kind of clustered here and this is down here at the bottom. I'm still finding ways to incorporate white space. And again, I realize mine is white and so it makes it a little easier to see, but I've got that going just to create a little bit of calm on a design that has a lot going on. So anytime you want to get really crafty and make something like a stenciled image and have that be a panel, trim that panel down and frame it out on your card base like this, because then you create this nice little bit of framing white space, whatever your card base color is, doesn't matter, right? And you will achieve a little bit of calm and a little invitation. Now here's a card that I came across the other day. And again, this too is still white space. Again, does not have to be white. Hey, Simon Hurley, I see you pop in there. Um, the card color background doesn't have to be white. I've even got a little stencil of a heart pattern going in the background, right? But there is definitely space framing out the sentiment and the flowers. Now I realize our time is coming, coming down. I gotta, I gotta move fast here. All right, let's bring in a card that I just shared this week. And again, this is pretty obvious with the white space surrounding, but again, those little panels, when you mount your cards onto a card base and allow that card base to come through, that is a wonderful way to invite white space into your design. And you can do this. You can do this. I can do this and you can do this. All right, I'm gonna bring in one more card here. Actually, I've got two more cards. I've showed you this before, but again, same thing, white space, framing the design and then that little panel trimmed down so that that pretty cardstock can come through in the background. I realize the time has expired. I'm gonna show you one more card that I've showed you before. And this little guy, again, this is really a design that features a lot of white space. I had talked about this with asymmetry, right? That everything is shifted off to one side for the balance. But this is also an example of how you can incorporate white space into a card design for dramatic impact or just impact, period. Because there's nothing going on over here. Do you know what I'm saying? But you've got it all anchored over here and it allows this energy, this design space to just flow off, flow off. It's so open and calm and inviting. And then to trim that panel down and mount it onto a card base and allow that quarter inch to come through, that is fantastic as well. In fact, I'm going to tell you, one of the reasons I love, there's a, I don't have it, I can't reach for it right now because I don't want to knock things over on the table, but I have this uh, A2 Layers Dies from Waffle Flower Crafts. I use it on almost every card to get that beautifully trimmed space on, on my thing, on my, on my card, on my thing. How's that for design? And that, my friends, is 10 minutes of crafty design. Yeah, I, you know what I know what I'm talking about. So that is white space in a nutshell. Well, not really a nutshell, but I, th I think you know what I'm saying. Ah, <sighs> all right. What set is that one, Kathy Zilski? You mean the, the floral? I don't know, but I will. I promise you this because I can't, I can only keep so much in my pretty little head. I am going to, after this video is done going live, I'm going to link everything below in the notes. So whatever I've shared, if you want to come back after this is done in about 15 minutes, I'll have it linked up, ready to go. And also there are other videos in this series you could watch. I, I was going to number them. I'm not going to number them anymore. I'm going to distinguish them with different thumbnail images. And there's just a lot of topics that I want to come back to and talk about. So before we go today. Um, if you do have any comments here, I can answer questions quickly before we go. Um, as long as it's not, what card set is that? Or what stamp set is that? Because clearly, clearly I don't know. Um, but I do want to point out something really quickly here. So if, if you decide you want to ask me a direct question that you didn't see answered here, or even if you have an idea for something you'd like to see covered, shoot me an email at kathy at kathyzilski.com. That is the easiest way to get a hold of me and I will see that, okay? All right, I'm gonna turn that guy off. And here's another thing. Uh, if you, uh, if you learn something from any of these chats and you post something on social media, tag me, tag me with the hashtag CZ 
Wait, let me point to it. Can I do it? I, it's backwards. CZ Design Chat because then I can go throughout the week and see what you're creating and see how, quite honestly, you people are nailing it because you are. And yeah, that's just a great way for me to see if you take anything that you've learned from this little chat. And again, these are short. Um, is busy pattern paper still considered white space? You know what I want to do? How do we do this? <gasps> that's how we do it. All right. I'm going to pop this up really quick because I just wanted to prove to myself. Let me, uh, let me turn off some of the other things that I got going on here. All right. Um, I'm going to pop this up on screen. And the answer is yes. Busy pattern paper can still be considered white space. Because if you look at it as a whole, here's something that I've done so many times when I'm designing scrapbook pages. Well, number one, I stand up and I look straight down at my page so I can really see what's happening. That's a great, that's a, that's a design hack that I think you all should know. If you're having trouble seeing a page or a card, stand up and look down. You're going to have a bird's eye view. It's going to be awesome. But if you blur your eyes a little bit when you're looking at a pattern paper, all of a sudden it just becomes this melange of color and you realize this is a white space of sorts. It's just a fuller and busier one. Does that make sense? But, you know, even like a super stra I've got, well, where are they? You know, I've got pattern papers over my shoulder. For example, let's say I was going to use this on a page. You know, you see that? It's still white space if I don't stick a bunch of stuff in it. That makes sense? All right. Um, and another thing too that I'd like to do going forward is I'd love to just do like a Q&A session because I really do like being able to pop up the questions and answer them. And oh, white space and visual triangle. This is a good one actually, I'm gonna pop this up. How do I achieve white space and a visual triangle? Well, I'm gonna show you how, <laughs> wait, where's it? Okay, here's one right here. Remember this little card that I showed you? Okay, there's a lot of white space going on. You see that? But what did I do? I placed the sequins with a direct connection to the title, right? We talked about in the sequin chat, we talked about having a direct connection to whatever it is you're trying to embellish. And that creates a visual triangle, three areas together, but it's still white space. So it's just a matter of looking at what you're designing and thinking, where can I connect things? Because you don't have to make it really busy to create a visual triangle, if that makes sense. So, ah, thank you so much. Now, how do I get that question out of there? I'm, I'm learning. I love this software that I'm streaming with. And anyone who's curious, it's called Ecamm Live for the Mac. I really, really like it. And, oh, Cordelia, I see your comment, but you can rewatch this. It's going to be available on my channel. And again, everyone, I'm going to go back in and I am going to add notes below so if I can link up any of these card projects, if you actually want to see the technical side of how I created them, by all means do. Uh, one other last thing. If you are not a subscriber to my YouTube channel, I would love to have you become a subscriber. I'm really loving YouTube. I'm loving this new foray into doing lives. I was a little nervous to get into this at first because I know it's, uh, well, it opens you up to some really weird comments. I'm going to tell you that. But I enjoy connecting with the people who are subscribing. And if you subscribe and you hit that gray bell below the video, you'll get notified every time I post. And as well, when I'm planning to go live again, you will be notified. So I think that's it. Again, I appreciate you tuning in for this live. And I look forward to seeing you back here again soon with another 10-minute design chat for crafty people. Thanks so much for watching. Now I have to figure out how not to go live. Okay, I'm gonna do it. I know I'm gonna do it. Thanks everyone. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.